Hi, welcome to the Boston Roll Channel. I'm your host, Brian Koval. Before we get started, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you want to see me play your favorite deck or your spicy brew on the channel, I take donation deck lists. I'll do a deck tech, play a full Magic Online League, and help tune your list. If that sounds good, check out my contact info. It's in the video description below. Now let's go play some Magic. Hello and welcome back once again to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Legacy and I have a donation deck from subscriber Travis who wanted me to see me play Blue White Omnitel. So I've played Blue Green Omnitel a number of times on this channel before. I think it's like two or three times. And this is the white version. So the core of this deck is show and tell for omniscience. That's the Omni, that's the tell in the name Omnitel. Show and tell, three mana sorcery, put an artifact creature enchantment or land from your hand onto the battlefield and your opponent does the same. The gamble is that you're going to have something better to put in than they do. Omniscience fits that bill. You can cast spells without paying their mana costs. So you get a 10 mana effect for 3. And then you get to cast stupid stuff like Emrakul. And you can Cunning Wish for cards out of your sideboard. All of this at instant speed if you have Omniscience. So Cunning Wish for shared summons getting... Emrakul and Monetary, Monastery Mentor. Shared summons, search your library for two creatures with different names. So Emrakul plus Mentor should win the game. That's the direct line. If you need to get a little more creative, like if you put in Omniscience and they put in Reclamation Sage or Oblivion Ring or something that destroys your Omniscience, you can Cunning Wish with that trigger on the stack, get Sublime Epiphany, counter that trigger, draw a card, and do some other stuff. So... That, that's your protection for the Omniscience once it's in play. In order to get your Omniscience there, Teferi Time Raveler and Blue Spells are what you're working with here. So you got the Force, the Daze, and Teferi's the big one. You want to... Basically, Teferi is show and tell number 5 and 6, which obviously it doesn't put Omniscience into play the way show and tell does, but it does tax their counter spells in the exact same kind of way. This is a must counter. Uh, use it or lose it because once this is in play you're not countering anything it also lets you show and tell in their end step or at instant speed uh, with the plus ability i'm not sure why you'd need to do that but it is available to you and my favorite part of this deck is the juke to monastery mentor so everything that is good against show and tell is not good against monastery mentor and vice versa like swords of plowshares is a joke uh supreme verdict is a joke. Containment Priest is a joke. Uh, Cluster Storm is a joke. Like they just split what your opponent has to respect so hard in two different directions. Like can't pyroblast this one. And then in the sideboard, there's two more of them, so we can just go full ham. So that's what this deck looks like. We are a combo deck game one, and we may or may not be a mid range mentor deck game two. Maybe we'll be a combo deck and a mid range mentor deck game two. We'll see how it plays out. But this is going to be hard to line up your answers correctly for the average legacy deck. So let's get into it and see how it goes. I'm on the draw with this cantrippy hand that doesn't really do anything else. Like I need both show and tell, omniscience, and a payoff for this. But I do have mana and disruption. And I actually am not oriented to this deck yet to know if this is a keep or a mulligan. So I'm going to keep it for science. Like, it's entirely possible that you're just supposed to mulligan a hand that doesn't have any part of your combo in it. But I, with the Ponder and the Brainstorm, I'm going to get to see a lot of cards. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Well, if I get Chalice of the Voided here, I'm not going to see very much. Please cast Blood Moon. Alright, yeah, don't care about that one. And it does stop me from playing my cantrips, but I have Lotus Petals. So... Let's give this a shot. Brainstorm, brainstorm, omniscience. Shuffle that up. That's more like it. All right, so I'm going to play my planes and my pedal. I'm playing my pedal in case I have to daze something this turn. But if I can get this mentor into play, life will be pretty good. Okay, so do I want to try to fight this with monastery mentor? Or do I want to hard cast my daze? This is kind of a, a difficult spot. I think I'm going to daze. It hurts. And if they have Spirit Guide, we're just in the garbage. Oh, geez. <laughs> One card left in hand. It was the Spirit Guide. We are officially in the garbage. 
So, I mean, Mentor's a hell of a card. If I find Basic Island, I can probably... All right, I mean, that plays. Just the third Lotus Petal. Get in there. Now I need Basic Island. If I can start triggering this Mentor... Oh, great. Or they could just draw another relevant spell, and I lose. Okay, so uh, being on the draw hurt me real bad this game. Um, this is a mountain. Yeah, I'm dead. Okay. Fair enough. But we know what we're playing against. And they've seen Lotus Petal, Ponder, Days, Monastery, Mentor. They might not even suspect that we're a show-and-tell deck. Like, it's entirely possible that they think we're just some sort of, like, Turbo Mentor strategy. Which, I mean, isn't far off, because that is kind of what I'm trying to do here. Especially post-board. So I like the Daisies. I, I do like the Turbo Mentor plan. Um, Teferi is good at removing permanence, uh, so I think Impulse gets removed. Yeah, being on the draw, I like days. Or being on the play, I like days. It gets worse on the draw. Not sure that I really need or want intuition. Like, I can cunning wish for it if I need it. Uh, how many Emrakuls do I need in my deck? I mean, this is a deck where I can just show and tell an Emrakul turbo mode, and they're going to have a hard time beating it. So I've got to cut three more cards if I want all of these to come in. Uh, okay, maybe days is worse than I want it to be. And. Teferi is a little wonky compared to Mentor. Like, Teferi's good, but how many three drops can I play is the real question. And maybe one of these preordains or another Daze. Yeah, against the Spirit Guides, Daze is kind of scary because you never know if it's actually going to work unless they're completely hellbent. On the play with a turn two Mentor. With force backup, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to lead on my polluted delta because that fetches basic island without taking away my basic planes. And I think I do want to play the pedal out to get ahead of chalice on zero. Like I can force something if I feel like I need to. Like if this, if this is like, okay, it is chalice. So I'm going to get a basic island and cast my brainstorm. This is just to fix things up a little bit. Um, force, force, blue card, blue card with Mentor. Yep, sign me up. All right, Chalice is in. I'm going to jam Mentor with double force back up, and that should win the game all by itself. And I am going to fetch basic planes here. I don't want Blood Moon to be part of this game at all. Here we are. I'm going to force anything that interacts with Monastery Mentor, whether it's like Chandra that would kill it, Stomp that would kill it, uh, Goblin Rabble Master that could block it. But if they have like Trinisphere or just like some garbage, uh, like Blood Moon, I let that sort of thing resolve. They sunk a lot of resources into whatever this is. Like they lost their city and they pitched a Spirit Guide. Shatter Skull smashing for two. Not on my watch. So the Prowess Trigger effectively counters the smashing. Kind of a bummer, I couldn't just like brainstorm to counter that. But it's actually countered too. And if I draw a land, I can cast Cunning Wish. Alright, uh, that's fine. Still got my trigger out of it. I did forget about Chalice. I'm not going to pretend that I calculated that. I totally forgot about Chalice, but I think if I had given it some thought, I still would have made the play to push damage onto the board. Ooh, pitching another Spirit Guide to do something else. Legion War Boss. Is this something I need to fight over? Yeah, what the hell. This was the plan from the start, and now I'm in on it. All right, I don't, I'm not going to play my land because I don't want them to think that, or I don't want them to know that my hand is empty. All right, that doesn't matter. Uh, That's not what I wanted. So I can push with the mentor. I don't think I can take my foot off the gas here. Like, they kind of have to respect an instant. Yeah, I yeah I, I think that they would block a monk there because Brainstorm just eats their Magus for free. But now Show and Tell is a live draw. All right, nice Blood Moons. All right, I'm going to make the same attack again. I have a backup Mentor now, so even if they do make the 
the good block. I still clear him out. Lethal is currently on board. If they have land, fiery confluence, they can clear this board. But no, they just had nothing. They still haven't seen anything. Oh, no, that's not true. I pitched two Cunning Wishes, so now they should know that I'm a show and tell deck. But other than those Cunning Wishes, they still haven't seen anything sh that shows I'm a show and tell deck. Uh, yeah, this still looks like the deck. I guess I could go one less Emrakul if I want my Teferi back. So that that would defend depend on like whether I think I'm going to be playing from ahead or from behind. Uh, I, I think maxing out the Emrakuls makes sense, though. I could bring in the Plows uh, to play sort of a smaller game. Like, I could just turn into basically blue-white midrange. And what would that game look like? Uh, Chalice the Void would be good, but it would mostly look like the kind of deck I'd want to play if I were uh, if I had chosen this deck myself. Uh, like mid-range mentor decks with sorts of plowshares and lots of basics are totally my shit. Uh, I would have to cut. I'd probably have to start trimming on show and tell stuff. Like the Emer at least one Emrakul would go. Maybe one Cunning Wish for the two plows. One Emrakul, one Cunning Wish. Plow, plow. Maybe Preordain would become a plow, but then my blue count gets a little low. I think I'm okay splitting the difference. Looking at this laid out, I kind of like it. If you're an expert with Blue White Omni Show, please let me know in the comments how you would handle this matchup. So, this is a hand that is immune to Blood Moon. Pretty soft to Chalice, but I do have the Force if I need it. You got it. Not even going to fight over that one. Uh, that's just not what this game is going to be about for the most part. I think I want. Okay, so I want to cast the Ponder. So I think I want to put the Daze in my hand so I can pitch a two force. I guess I didn't need that third land right there. And finding the basic planes will be pretty challenging to do because there is just the one and I can't fetch it anymore. But I also have Echoing Truth and I could also just draw Show and Tell at some point and dumpster straight through the Blood Moon. Nice, now I can hard cast Daze. Which takes a lot of pressure off. I'm going to save this ponder because without shuffles it gets a whole lot worse. I want to see every card I can see off of it. I'm going to try the days first. If they have spirit guide I'll follow up with the force. All right that that's a relief. I love when their cards just go in the graveyard. Basic planes. Ooh. Well there's show and tell and echoing truth. How do I want to set this up? Uh, the echoing truth can bounce blood moon for a turn Free up my basics, and then my white spells can take over. I think that's how I want to play this game. We get to draw the echo next turn. I can force this turn, pitching either force or Teferi, based on how I think this game's going to go. Magus of the Moon. Uh, okay, that makes my land that I just lined up kind of shitty. Can I force this in good faith? Uh, I guess... I just I did just line up this entire plan that's based on getting white cards in onto the stack. So yeah, let's make this move. I could even play uh oh no, I can't because this isn't an ancient tomb yet. I was about to say I can even play Teferi right now, but that's not true. Now let's hope they just cast some creatures. Uh yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Echo. Tell me your truth. Uh, the top of my deck is Show and Tell, which is a card that I don't want right now. And I know their hand has two Blood Moons in it. Sea Storm looks pretty good. All right. Uh, Show and Tell just became a much more interesting draw. I don't need to Teferi yet. So I'm just going to shuffle these cards. And if I find an island, I can Teferi anyway. There he is. Okay, so if I find Show and Tell, I can put Omni into play. Uh, I'm officially out of the Blood Moon. Like, that's just not a card that's important anymore. Oh my god. Is this Shatter Skull smashing? Or is it just two Blood Moons? Oh, they were just floating all their, their double mana before they start cast their moon. That makes sense. Alright, the moons are back in town. Yep, yeah, don't care. 
Okay, so I can cast show and tell. It just doesn't do anything yet. Uh, I can bust to fairy. So I can show and tell at instant speed if necessary. I can get a redraw off to fairy, but I want to be as sure as I can be that show and tell is going to work before I do anything about it. God, what costs six in this deck? I'm so scared. All right, just nothing. Uh, show and tell, re show and tell. I guess firing to fairy at a moon. I, I just have so many ways I could win the game right now that I feel like I should take that extra draw since it's offered. <laughs> There's that blood moon, the fourth one of the game. Play another one. Let's just go to five. Five moons, no problems. Uh, all right, so they're just playing that as creature mode. I can bounce that with Teferi, or I can plow it. I guess I should just plow it. What am I saving this Teferi for? Okay, now I win. So I can... I guess I should show and tell first, just in case they put in something that I need to bounce with Teferi, like Trinisphere. All right, cool. Cast with Omniscience. Yes, get shared summons, cast with omniscience, get mentor and emrakul. Uh, yes, mentor, emrakul, disenchant your blood moon. That's gone. Uh, plus, and then I get to attack with all my creatures, and then I can bounce emrakul with Teferi and then refire. I probably could have gotten lethal with the brainstorm and show and tell just casting spells but i'm gonna style on them if they let me bounce emrakul with teferi i'm gonna freaking take it they want to hang out over there pretending they're we're still playing this game i'm fine with that bang even have the cunning wish for good measure not gonna use it still out all these the flawless victory no permanence no life points you're out of here on to the next round I'm on the draw for round number two with a kind of a juicer here. I have Omniscience and Emrakul and the mana to cast a turn two with Days Protection. And I have this impulse to help me find the way. So Elves is a famously, hilariously positive matchup for any show and tell deck. Uh, I'm not trying to talk smack because Elves is extremely powerful and we don't currently have the combo lined up. But... In general, uh, I've played a lot of Elves, and Show and Tell is basically the nightmare. The fact that they attacked with Nettle Sentinel makes me feel good. Uh, that means I'm going to get another turn. If they're going to combo me off and hoof me, they do that all first main. I don't think I'm going to get very many juicy days targets in this match, but I don't want to set myself back a land here. Okay, uh, I like... Well, Ponder and Impulse see the same number of cards. Uh, like, if the Ponder fails, uh, Shuffle see a fourth card, and Impulse also sees four cards. But I can Impulse, End Step, Untap, Ponder, and still Show and Tell, so I can see eight cards if I sequence it this way. The Impulse can also find a counter spell if I feel like I need it. Uh, there's the Shep, so JK, I don't get counter spells. That's alright, that wasn't really part of the plan. Yikes. How deep are we going? Uh, they did have the glimpse. They spent two creatures already, but I could easily just lose right now. Ooh, second glimpse. Yeah, they are, they are going at it. Okay, so Wirewood Symbiote. They have to bounce Heritage Druid or Allosaur Shepherd. Yeah, so they have to bounce the Shep. Okay, yeah, they can easily pay for days, though. So, uh, I don't know what I'm... Oh, and it can't be countered. The thing itself can't be countered. I always forget how stupid that card is. The good news is, if they do pass the turn, like if they don't hoof me for lethal right now, I have a lot of looks at the show and tell. The bad news is, they're pretty likely to hoof me for lethal right now. Well, that second Nettle Sentinel is a huge beating. Now every elf just uh, nets two mana. And two cards the whole way up the chain. They have eight cards in hand right now. 
and currently two attackers with the hoof and the sentinel and that's really all they need i think i win this game if i'm on the play like the uh we both had turn threes they just went first i also don't know that i have a turn three it just seems likely that it will happen so having played a lot of elves myself i know how many lands you can end up with <laughs> at the end of a glimpse i've definitely had like 12 cards in hand and 11 of them are lands and one of them's another glimpse they have not made their land drop this turn so they still have the cradle they can drop Birchler ranger not that they needed that they already have two heritage druids but if they do have splash colors like they could cast the uh arcan of valor's reach hard cast mode now so it seems likely at this point that they'll be able to put literally their whole deck in their hand if they want it All right, yeah there's the archon let's see what they're going to name with this i'm not going to respond if they named Sorcery, I just can't win. All right, so they named Instant. So I'm going to have to ponder or just naturally draw the, the the Show and Tell. Like, Show and Tell is a Sorcery. I think if I had Impulsed in Response, they would have named Sorcery instead. Uh, I also think that even if I put Emrakul into play, I'm going to lose. Like, even if I get a turn, even if I Show and Tell, Omniscience, put in Emrakul... Uh, cast Emrakul, attack. They st have so many permanents and they're above 15 life that they're still going to win. And I also still have no faith that I'm not going to get hoofed right now because they've drawn two-thirds of their deck and they play two hoofs. They have as many cards in their hand as they do in their deck right now. And now they have more cards in hand than in deck. I'm just going to let them combo, enjoy themselves, because... This is great for the camera. I really like elves, and I like showcasing what it can do, even if I'm on the wrong side of it. There's going to be a hoof with an attack for like 40 million coming. They have two Quirion Rangers, so they can untap. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, let's see how big these creatures are. Oh, uh, that was a sweet trick. So they gave their things base 5-5, five, five before, and they also... Pumped with hoof, so they're all five fives that get the hoof bonus. Any one of their creatures is a lethal attacker, and they're attacking with three creatures. Not bad. You did it. Uh, I just want to look at my top eight cards and see if we would have got there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's off screen. All right, th this one's a shuffle, but we actually weren't getting there, so. Brutal. Okay, so this is a matchup where the Swords to Plowshares come in. Uh, I do like Mindbreak Trap because that does beat the the other idiot, the, the Shep. But so does Plow. Like Plowing Shepherd. They also don't know what I'm doing. I, I went Island, Island, Die. So they don't know what I'm doing over here yet. Unless they have the Soul Read. So Intuition is a little slow impulse is a little slow and i think i need the entire combo package because like we saw there's not a lot of breathing room in the matchup uh days is actively bad because i want my lands and they're really good at countering spells so maybe i should cut more like just go to zero days uh maybe i do want intuition back and i could play I could bring in the Disenchants in case they have Choke. Because they really did only see two islands. I could bring in Echoing Truth as a more generic sort of Disenchant effect that can also bounce creatures. I really don't think Mentor is going to be the way that I win this game. So I'm just not going to bring those in. But I'm going to leave in the one that's in the main because that's part of the shared summons. So I have a show and tell, but nothing to put in and no way to find it. I'm going to mulligan. Like I need to go fast. Okay, this one this one's a keep. Keep this, send the island. So I get to brainstorm and shuffle away. There's a good chance we can line up a turn three here, but we do need to get there. Elves is a more consistent combo deck than Show and Tell is, but Show and Tell is much more powerful when it does what it wants to do. I would not be mad about finding a swords to plowshares here. Alright, Force of Will's not bad either. Caracas is a non-island land, which I don't play very many of, but I don't care. I'm going to get the Tundra and cast Ponder right now. 
Uh, there's Emrakul. So I can just put in Emrakul and hope it's good enough. Uh, I mean, there's a good chance that it's not good enough, but I think that's a good, good chance to win this game. I'm not going to shuffle that away, uh, basically, is the, the calculation here. Jeez. That card is so fucked. So Visionary Resolves, as we know. Unfortunately, show and tell, they get to put in resources, and any resource can crack the game back in the wrong direction. But I just really don't think we're going to do better than this. We're just going to have to clench our cheeks and hope they can't kill us. Like, if they just put in Gaia's Cradle, that would be a nightmare to me. And I wish this Force Backup did anything, but Allosaur Shepard too good. I would feel okay if Shepard didn't exist. Like, uh, them winning from three cards in hand through an Emrakul and a Force of Will is not super likely. But with Shep involved, I think they can do it. Is this lethal? I don't know how to do math. So they get the Hoof. It's an 8-8. Eight, eight. 6, 10, nope, I'm at 3. GG. A little short. Emrakul can block. It does have that text on it. 15 is greater than 9. I'm at 3 and you have no permanence. Alright, the Gambit paid off. I'm not going to show them my Teferi if I don't have to. See you later, elves. Looks like we might put up a flawless victory here, but I will ponder. Oh, Omniscience, thanks for showing up. Okay. Finding the plow. All right, we we did manage to just overpower that that draw. Now they know what we're doing, and we know what they're doing. There are no more secrets between us. So my last question to myself here is, Mindbreak Trap better as a card in my main deck that I can just have in my hand sometimes, or as a Cunning Wish target? Like, when I need Mindbreak Trap, am I likely to leave up three mana to get it? And I think the answer to that is no. Like, I think being able to ponder, preordain, brainstorm into it while I'm using my mana in a low resource game is going to be a better use for that card than wishing for it, even though it's like technically more copies this way. All right, this is my deck. Well, we have, we have options on a turn one omniscience here. If I draw the show and tell, we're going. Show and tell. Oh my god. Uh, feed me. Uh, the bad news is I don't have the Cunning Wish, so if they do have some thing they can put in and Brick Omniscience, I only have Brainstorm to respond to it. Oh, uh, they just said Misty Rainforest. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to Preordain first. Uh, Preordain. Uh, I'm casting that first because that doesn't shuffle your deck. Uh, ponder might. Right, there's the cunning wish. Now we're we, we've done it. Okie dokie. Yes, use this ability. Shared summons. Share them. Monastery mentor and Emrakul. Let's go. God, I love mo that monastery mentor is part of the the combo line as well as part of the fair line. All right, ships in the night just. Who could ram their combo down the other throat faster? And it turned out it was me this time. On the play for round number three, I have a hand full of cantrips. I'm going to keep this. Again, just like throwing back to round one, I don't know if you're supposed to ship hands that don't have combo pieces, but this has three cantrips in it. That's so many. I think I'm going to ponder first because... Oh, that's not true. I'm going to preordain first because preordain seems fewer cards than ponder. And I'm looking for all the pieces of my combo. If I was looking, if I had the omniscience already and was looking for show and tell, I would use ponder that gets the most looks. But preordain can find any one of the pieces, and then I can use ponder to find the other one because uh, I'm just I'm just peeking right now. I don't know what's going on. I don't think I need this to fairy. I'm into the impulse though. Let's see what we're playing against. I don't like running out Lotus Petals uh, if I don't know the matchup. Like Maybe they have Chalice on zero, but are they going to make that move? Maybe they have Discard, maybe they don't. But I think that in the vast majority of matchups, hiding the fact that you're a Lotus Petal combo deck is more valuable than playing around one of those things I just said. 
Right, brainstorm. Show me something. Oh, show me everything. I'll take that too. Uh, so I don't need two Lotus Petals. And do I want to ship this land? Do I even want to cast Ponder, I guess, is the follow-up question. Like, or I could just pedal pedal show and tell right now with force backup but i can play around days next turn i think i want to put pedal and ponder on top of my deck pedal and impulse maybe maybe it's just both pedals i'll just put both pedals and i'm planning on not shuffling with the flooded strand i would like to draw a pedal to play around days next turn and my hand's already perfect I think that putting back Petal Tundra and casting Ponder, looking for the third land and some extra spells would have been a reasonable thing to do. But that's just not what I chose to do this time. All right, Lotus Petal, get in. If they're Doomsday, they are a Days deck, and I'm glad I played around it. If they're not Doomsday, uh, then they have to beat a Force of Will here. Show. And my force will pitch Ponder because that's the sorcery. And it sees the same number of cards, but in a weirder way than Impulse. All right. Are we in? Nope. Another force. Okay. Uh, so we got a four for three there. Up on cards, but that's much worse than just <laughs> winning the game. And they have force of negation in their deck, so they're not doomsday. This is actually some sort of blue black based control deck possibly grixis they pitched a brainstorm and a force to their two forces there uh that ponder was a shuffle i like to see that Let's just draw show and tell ancient tomb huh i'm gonna impulse the ancient tomb gives me a lot of mana to play with take ponder here just keep it going show me show and tell and emrakul in this ponder uh, okay, uh, that works too. So I think I want to put the intuition in my hand and just pass the turn. Like If they play soft counters like Spell Pierce or um, Flusterstorm, I want them to think that they're good. I don't want them to see this Ancient Tomb. If they have Hymn to Tarok, the Ancient Tomb can pad the, the business spells a little bit. If They could still be Grixis and just haven't shown me red yet, but... This could be some sick blue-black control deck also. I might as well tap the tomb, I think. Let's go. Please resolve. All right, Omniscience, you're in. Seems like they have nothing. Cast with Science. Or they put in a land. Oh, they could have Hardcast Force here for my intuition. All right, so I'm going to get three Cunning Wishes, I think is the plan. There are not three Emrakuls in this deck. There's only two, which is different from uh, the blue-green deck. Cunning Wish, Cunning Wish, Cunning Wish. Yeah, they've either shown Masterful Patience or they just actually have nothing. It's starting to feel like they just have nothing. Okay, yeah, they definitely have nothing. All right, they are deceased. The Emrakul will get the job done. I cast Emrakul first in case they had Colagon's command. Like if I put Monastery Mentor on the stack and they just K command make me discard Emrakul, that's pretty bad. All right, powered through a double force hand. So now I can, I'm definitely bringing in Beseju, but I think I'm also bringing in the Mentors. Uh, I really, really into that, that side, that juke. Like I said, in the deck tech, I'm going to do it every game. Just wait. Uh, Days is medium on the draw. Beseju does a lot of that work. And then the two mentors just provide a different kind of pressure. And I think that's all I really want to do for this matchup. Until they show me more cards that I care about, this is what I'm doing. All right, on the draw with a, a mentor, some science, a couple of cantrips. Let's do it. Uh, am I getting thought seized? We're going to get get to see some discard out of this deck. Sure looks like it. Duress. All right, that can take my Omniscience. Or they can start picking off my cantrips, depending on what their hand looks like. What they care about most. The Shared Summons did show them Monastery Mentor, but I wonder how dedicated 
they're willing to be to removing a creature post board. Like, how many lightning bolts can you leave in against a show and tell deck? Just to, out of respect for Mentor? Like, normally the answer is zero, but they did see it, which is kind, kind of messes with the, the conventional math a little bit. Oh, they did go after a preordain. Do they have the surgical to uh, take another card out of my hand? Is that the plan? But if that was the plan, they could have surgical the omniscience. Okay, yeah, they definitely have surgical. So they, they built themselves a little two for two there. They get to look at this cunning wish. Sure. Whatever. But getting a card off surgical is better than average performance for a surgical extraction, because normally it's a zero for one. But that that still wasn't like a two for one. That was two cards that they spent to get there. And now I'll be pretty happy to just jam a turn three mentor with force back up. I've been in that spot against Grixis many times. Though we're still not sure that they're even Grixis. This could just be blue black. Which is super cool, if true. Sedge Mother. That's just like Monastery Mentor. Is this something I want to fight over? Like, I don't think I'm equipped to beat them in a fair game. Yeah, I'm just going to force this, pitching the, the Omniscience. This is where I draw show and tell and would have won the game. Uh, not quite. Do I play around Daze? Is that a card they're going to have? I don't think they have it, but like I've said all the time on this channel, don't lose to Daze if you can avoid it. I think that's worth the two life to make sure Mentor doesn't get answered cleanly by a stupid card like that. Speaking of stupid cards like that, yikes. This deck plays a lot of basics, I just chose not to fetch them. Alright, here's two basics. I'm going to fetch one now, uh, just to play around... I don't know, they could have Shadow of Doubt or some absolute nonsense that I don't really want to play against. Their deck is so cool. I am medium jealous of their deck. Let's draw a Brainstorm, please. That's the opposite of Brainstorm. Alexa, what's the opposite of Brainstorm? Emrakul, the Aeon's Torn. So I can cast this Cunning Wish... And it can get, I think, the impulses in my sideboard. Yeah, that can just, like, keep things moving. Just keep triggers triggering. I'm not trading off with this stupid thing. So I'm going to get my planes. Oh, I can get swords to plowshares. That's an instant. Is that the kind of instant I want? I guess we'll see if my spell resolves before I think about any of that. It did not resolve. Oh no, Flusterstorm! <laughs> That's so sick. Sedgemore Witch is outperforming Monastery Mentor as much as I hate to admit it right now. Yeah, maybe knowing that they have the, the Sedgemores, that changes how deep I want to be on this Mentor plan. And respecting back to basics is definitely something I could have done earlier if I had been thinking about it. But I am fairly confident at this point this is a blue-black deck and nothing extra. So, oh, taking my three. All right, uh, it's just time to draw show and tell, I guess, and I can still win this game. Though, so, the fact that Sedgemore Witch incentivizes them to run multiple Fluster Storms in the main makes me a little dubious about uh, leaning in on the, the show and tell plan. Makes me really glad I brought in Besagey, though. Another witch. Oh no. I couldn't beat the first one. What are you doing to me here? And brainstorm gets... So they have so many pests at this point that even if I do show and tell, it miraculously resolves. Emrakul comes into play. Or Omniscience comes into play. Cast Emrakul. Like they can just sack... Oh no, they're at actual 15. Wait, th but they sack the pests. They go to over 15. They block with Baleful Strix. And then they crack back with their Sedgeboar Witches. I'm actually pretty sure I lose this game, even if everything goes right. But I gotta draw the show and tell first before any of that becomes an issue. So how about a deck? Show and tell? It's not a show and tell. Alright, we're dead. Really cool deck. Really cool game. I hope I beat them in game three, but their deck is awesome. You all know me. I love removing basic or non-basic lands from legacy decks. So Daze is a lot better on the play if I, I'm trying to punch through a show-and-tell, though 
them having the fluster storms makes it a little scarier. But Sedgemore Witch is a three drop, which is imminently dazable. The show and the source of plowshares. Yeah, I think I just need to overpower the witch with Mentor or with Show and Tell. I, I don't think I get to play a Swords to Plowshares game against this deck. And I'm not going to bring in Disenchant because I have five basics of my own in this deck. Like I, I, I'm not going to fill up a slot just to answer a card that I can ignore in a lot of circumstances. This is not a keep. Uh, that land doesn't cast any spells. Ah, oh, this one's fine. I'm going to get rid of the redundant island because I am hoping that my deck produces more of them for me. Lands are the most replaceable thing in the average hand here. All right, well, here's Omniscience and Show and Tell. Uh, yeah, I mean, top, top. Show and Tell in my hand, or Force of Will in my hand. Did I say Show and Tell a minute ago? I meant Force of Will, but... I'm hiding the Omniscience because they have shown me they play Duress in their deck. Flooded Strand doesn't get Duress, so yeah, they're just on the... I wonder if they're on literally no non-basic lands. If they are, I have a lot of respect for that. I tried that when Prismatic Vista was printed. I played Blue-White Miracles with zero non-basic lands and quickly realized that one Tundra is probably the right number. Ancient Tomb... Ancient Tomb, Cunning Wish. Uh, so I can set up a multi-turn line here where I could Cunning Wish for Intuition, Intuition for Show and Tell, Show and Tell Omniscience. Uh, no, I'm not going to shuffle. I'm not. And I can use the extra Ancient Tombs to play around the Soft Permission because we know this deck has Fluster Storm in it. Oh, they also have Surgical Extraction, which makes Intuition really bad. Okay, I'm going to let this resolve. They'll probably take the Cunning Wish, would be my guess. I guess I just Cunning Wish for show and tells. I'm working way too hard. Or no, no, I do. I was right the first time. My brain just shortcutted. I do have to Cunning Wish for intuition. You cannot Cunning Wish for show and tell out of your deck. Got a lot going on right now. And my brain is just like, yeah, just, just Cunning Wish for show and tell. They took my Force of Will. Interesting. So that probably means they can win a counter war. Here's Cunning Wish. I can cast it around a Fluster Storm. And Cunning Wish exiles itself when it resolves, so I don't have to worry about getting extracted a second copy. Extraction messes up the intuition line so bad, though. Like, they can literally just wait forever. Fluster Storm does make me commit my Lotus Petal at this point. All right, what do I want? I think Impulse might actually be better, just safer than Intuition because we've already seen the the Surgicals out of them. And I'm just going to pass here. They know two of the cards in my hand. And if I Impulse, even if I find the Show and Tell, I could cast it, but that's two spells into their Fluster Storm, which I'm trying really hard to play around. Oh, they do have an Underground Sea. They're not pure basic list. You've lost all my respect, opponent. All right, so that brainstorm didn't shuffle anything, and they've missed a land drop. So they have seven spells in their hand, confirmed. Uh, that's how we do that. Ooh, or I could grab the Besaju. All right, what do I think is going to win this game? Monastery Mentor or Besaju? I think it's Mentor. Sorry, Besaju. I do love you. You're just not what I'm looking for right now. If they have a Force of Will, this is a good place to use it. Surgical Extraction, Targeting, Force of Will. Okay, uh, so I can Brainstorm here and get a free Shuffle off of their Surgical, but I think changing the information after they get a look at my hand makes more sense. So they're going to exile all my forces, probably Force back. They're just clearing the way for their thing right now. I guess knowing that I could Cunning Wish for Force of Will... And when this fight is another layer, I don't know. That was a weird play, but I'm really glad I didn't commit to the intuition line. Now that I've, now that we've seen this was available to them the whole time. You're just in there, like swimwear. 
So I guess I brainstorm now. In this, they can fluster my brainstorm, but I don't really care. At least they're not getting you know, five tokens off of a witch with it. Okay, and I've protected all the information that I that they just got. They don't know what's in my hand anymore. They can probably presume that I kept the cunning wish. Plague engineer, my monks. We've got a plan. Cunning wish for swords to plowshares. Yeah, if they've been slow rolling a counter spell, knowing that they had plague engineer ready to answer the monks, this is a a pretty reasonable line. Bang. Swords to plowshares. So I should probably play around soft permission by not doing it right now. Though if they have a duress effect, I'm going to have to. Once we go to my turn, I lose this monk. But I think it's worth doing. Oh, that's funny. If you want to counter this, you're welcome to it. If it lets me put omniscience into play. All right, that's gone. I think that I don't just jam show and tell because it doesn't do anything. Because if they get to like put in anything or just like echoing truth, my show and tell, all that's pretty bad. I know I'm playing into discard by doing it this way. Bummer. Yeah, they, they were well suited to answer Monastery Mentor. Plague Engineer is a nice one card package to do that. Yeah, if I find any cantrip, I'm going in on this Omniscience. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm actually one man away from casting Omniscience. Oh, now they can cast Force. Not anymore. I don't think they're going to need to. This would be a great time to have Mystic Sanctuary in the deck. That's not true. I don't have three islands. All right, I'm going to let them counter this one. Force it. Force it. Force Pitching Baleful Strix. You got it. Maybe I should have cast the second one right away to play around Surgical. But does that play into Cluster Storm? One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, force show show uh, they top topped with that oh no there's this here comes the surgical one two three four five six seven eight nine uh they're going for the duress yeah i mean like i said two turns ago i know i'm playing around into discard by playing around soft permission but i mean here we are the opponent's deck is, is they they've played well and their deck is well designed to mess up what I'm doing. So good job all around. Is it weird that they took omniscience? I guess if they have another Oh god, am I getting ninjutsued? I'll be so jealous if they do that. Maybe they did the math and realized I was about to cast. And by did the math, I mean count to ten and realized I could almost cast omniscience. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Zero. Yeah, I actually can't cast Omniscience because they they have enough damage on board. It doesn't matter. But I guess I take a draw step because they did leave me with show and tell. If I draw Emrakul, I can put it into play. Alright, I'm dead. GG's. Awesome deck. Well played opponent. Well designed deck as well. Next round. I'm on the draw for round number four, and I think I like this hand. It has Cunning Wish and Emrakul. Uh, if I find Show and Tell, I'm on the draw with a Brainstorm, so I get some looks here. Uh, it is a one lander, but nothing wrong with a one lander. All right, finally played against Delver. I'm not happy about that. I'm just saying, like, given the uh, the climate of the Legacy format, it's weird that it took this long. So Delver reveals Ponder. This is the, the weird art Delver. That's pretty cool. It's not that far off from the original. So there's the Ponder. They don't know what I'm doing yet. They've just seen Basic Island go. I think this is a situation that merits an end step brainstorm from me. Uh, normally, I am the one advocating for main phase brainstorms, but under the gun from Delver like this, Maybe I'm supposed to fire it off end step, try to set up a strong turn two, uh, like that. So now I get to play around days and I have force backup. Uh, and I get to just put Emrakul into play. Yeah, that looks pretty good. 
And if this fails, I have to ferry that can bounce the Delver next turn. So they need two forces here, or a force and two dazes. I'm going to pitch the Cunning Wish because that one's the farthest away from being helpful. Bang, here comes Emrakul. And they put in nothing. I don't think Delver decks can beat Emrakul in play, game one. Like, unless this has some weird technology, but uh, I guess they could be Grixis and play an Edict, but that's generally not going to happen. They're weirding me out a little, the fact that they're still playing this game at all, but this could all just be an elaborate bluff or them just lying to themselves. Like, it generally doesn't hurt to play out one extra turn of a game, like, make your opponent wonder, like, oh, do they have a Caracas? Like, what are they playing towards? Do they have uh, Edicts? Uh, I don't know. So exactly the things that were going through my head are the reasons that you would want to do that. So Baseju comes in. Uh, I like Mentor. I like Swords to Plowshares. Uh, this sideboard plan should look pretty similar because I've done it several times now. I think Days on the draw is bad, especially against the deck that pressures my mana. And this is where I can start to think about shaving an Emrakul. So that is, against Delver, that is like sometimes better than Omniscience to put in because uh, definitely nothing they can do about this, but they could theoretically answer an Omniscience. But I'd rather, I'd still rather have Omniscience because if this resolves, you get to Cantrip and stuff. I really like the Teferis here. All right, I think Daze is actually just the worst card by a long, long, long shot here. And we're back in with this uh, blue-white mid-range slash show-and-tell deck. And hopefully this opponent will be less equipped than the last one to just easily answer both plans, because, wow, that was an impressive display last round. Deep. This is a, a quick mentor with force backup. If they turtle up over there, this is exactly the kind of hand that's going to beat them. Uh, do I want to play into Stifle? I would like to cast my Preordain this turn, but... I don't need to play into Stifle. I also probably need to fetch Tundra here to cast the Mentor at all. Second land. Uh, they are the full rug. They have the Wooded Foothills. Uh, they are fetching... I was about to say they're fetching one at a time, but that is how you fetch. Like, having Stifle doesn't change that. Sylvan Library. That's not what I'm going to fight over. So draw for turn. Uh, Caracas. Not bad. Um... I'm going to fetch my Tundra, play my Ancient Tomb. I'm going to play my Lotus Petal so I can play around Days. Uh, I know that is a Monk if it resolves, but I'm not going to give them Days as an out if I don't have to. If they force, I force, we force. And then I have Cantrips to start making Monks and hitting more land drops, or hitting more Cantrips. Get mentors in. Nice. So I can brainstorm at instant speed and trigger prowess if I if I need to, but unfortunately lightning bolt is pretty strong against mentor. I would need to trigger it twice, but the good news is there's a good chance they cut their lightning bolts, or at least some number of them. So they can attack my tundra. It's not a huge deal. They paid the full eight on that Sylvan library, which seems kind of reckless. Because even if they do successfully bolt my mentor, I can brainstorm in response, make a monk, and that monk can punch. Uh, this Tarmogoyf is unfortunately going to grow from my Lotus Petal here. Blue source. Let's go. Uh, if I find an island and I can just keep the spells going, it would be really nice to punch through this Goyf this turn. Nice. Yeah, so I am just going to get basic island here. I'm Oh. Whoops, Goyf's a 4-5. Uh, what did I put in the graveyard? Oh, I put a sorcery in the graveyard with Preordain. I thought I would be able to attack there, but I actually just can't. Never mind. I'll back off. <laughs> yeah, I was ready to just punch into their 3-4 Goyf with my 3-3 Mentor, let them block, kill it with Brainstorm. But that's not what happened. This Tarmy Goyf is on the full moat duty. Uh, it, they gotta do some work to... Brick the Mentor. Delver's fine. 
they'd be crazy to attack. Yeah, I agree. This is a good brainstorm. My hand's not very good right now. It'd be a good place to pyroblast if they have it. Ooh, that's interesting. So I can put back the force and then Cunning Wish for Sword Supply Shares and cast it. Or I could just wait and do all of it. Uh, no, I actually do like that play a lot. Because this makes Mentor big enough to punch through Goyf even if the Plow doesn't resolve. Oh, they just conceded. They've had enough. I don't think we were quite done yet, but I mean, all right. They know their hand better than I do. On to the final round. On the play in the final round, the positive record is locked. Now we're playing for the 4-1. Uh, I'm playing against Aaron Relentless, who is known for playing death and taxes. Uh, and this hand is not going to do it in that matchup. This one's much closer to somewhere I want to be. I don't like that I don't have any basic lands against the, the Wasteland port deck, but I think this is good. I'm going to keep it and send probably the Redundant Cunning Wish to the bottom. Yeah, Thalia can control, or Caracas can control Thalia. So Force of Will, Ponder, Preordain, this isn't what I want. I'm just looking for basic land so I can play the game. The Ancient Tomb's exciting if they don't just aggro waste me. Oh, they're not playing. Not on Death and Taxes today. Let's see if it's Maverick. Is it like something tertiary? Or are they just totally in the weeds with elves or something crazy? Playing their land. Oh, they are actually elfing. Um, I'm going to choose to ignore that. So I think I want to... What does Cunning Wish do in this spot? I could wish for Intuition, but... That doesn't do what I needed to. I could wish for Swords of Plowshares, but I'm really not interested in that. There's an Omniscience. Uh, this I don't think this does what I needed to either. What does do I what I needed to? All right, how do I map this out? So if I put Omniscience in my hand right now, or I think I put Force of Will in my hand right now, and then I play Ancient Tomb. No, I play Caracas. I want to bluff that I'm not a combo deck for as long as possible. And I think I will just fire off the Force of Will on the first thing it's allowed to target. Because with Shepard in the deck, you never know. They had the Cradle. That's why I aggro forced. Because uh, that Birchler Ranger represented at least two mana. Is not something I want to have to navigate. All right, so I can Cunning Wish for Swords to Plowshares if I feel like that's going to be important. But I really don't want to have to go down that road. I can also Cunning Wish for the Mind Break Trap at this point. So there's a couple routes available. And this Ancient Tomb just totally changed whatever they thought they knew about what we were doing here. One, two, three, four. So Mind Break Trap is on if I want it. Uh, if I Cunning Wish for Intuition, I actually know that I'm drawing a blue land next. Yeah, Pluto Delta is the top card of my deck. So if I Cunning Wish for Intuition, I can do it Intuition for Show and Tell, then cast it. But that still leaves me one short. I won't have any spells to actually fire off with the Omniscience. I'll just have Omniscience in play. I think I'm going to end up a turn short on this one. Right, so they're picking they floated five with cradle, picked up the Lanor Visionary or Elvish Visionary. They get to replay that. It's good for another card. They don't have four mana to natural order right now. Are they gonna Zenith? Zenith for two. Alright, that's probably gonna get another visionary, which draws a card and gives them a third elf. I really don't want to use this cunning wish for my break trap at all. But I guess I'm dead to Shepard next turn anyway. Yeah, they can just activate Cradle and... Or tap Cradle, activate this in for 25. And the Symbiote has been used. So if I'm going to plow Shepard, I need to do it now. Yeah, one card short. Uh, if I just had like some cantrip, 
one extra card in my hand, uh, then I would be able to omniscience, but not going to get there this game. Just reclaimer also. My god. All right, so I have to do this now if I'm going to do it. Like I am literally dead on board to Allosaur Shepherd, so I have to take some sort of action. The symbiote's been used, so let's get rid of that. At least take lethal off the board, please. And now I'm representing hardcast force of will, but I don't think they're going to respect that. I don't think they need to. But if they are on sort of a dirtily hand, uh, Brainstorm could save me. Oh. Forget about that dirtily hand. There's the glimpse of nature. We know they have Scavenging Ooze and Elvish Visionary in hand, plus the, El the Wirewood Symbiote in play to keep the party going. Yeah, we lost this one. That's another game one lost to Elves, just uh, ships in the night. No meaningful interaction on either side, but... Show and Tell has a significantly higher fail rate than Elves does. It's also weird we played against Elves twice in the same league. The deck is not that popular. Zenith for one. This will probably get the Shep. Yeah, and then they can just light up the team. Oh, do they have the second Cradle? No, Dried Arbor from hand. Make six. God, what's happening to me? Six floating, seven, eight. Okay, yeah, just hard cast hoof. That'll do. Okay, this looks familiar. We've been here before. Time to take two games off of Elves. And hopefully just the uh, sideboard dumpster strat will do enough. So the plows and the mind break trap are what I brought in last time. The dazes just came straight out. That's not what this matchup is about. And I don't think beating them with a fair mentor is the way forward either. We talked about that. Uh, did I have the Echoing Truth in last time? I don't remember. Let's take a look. Uh, intuition is important. That is part of the speed package of the deck. So, sorry, sorry Echoing Truth. Or maybe it's Impulse. Did I cut that? All right, this is what I'm going to do. Echoing Truth in the sideboard, the three plows and the mind break trap in the main. Just everything that can make my combo happen faster is in my deck the intuition find the show and tell every payoff for show and tell obviously every show and tell so this is perhaps the kind of hand i'm looking for on the play uh i have show and tell cunning wish cantrips to dig i'm gonna keep this if they do have a thought seize i can brainstorm to protect it uh, just trying to get to three mana here I could also just force a will thoughtsies, though I'm probably not interested in actually doing that. All right, time to make a choice. Brainstorm to hide the cards, just force it. I think I'm gonna brainstorm. Ooh, science. So I'm gonna put show and tell and planes on top of the deck in that order, or a flooded strand. All right, show and tell and planes. I'm gonna hide those. They can take probably Cunning Wish since I have two Omnisciences. Really wish I hit an Ancient Tomb there or a Lotus Petal. That would have been the the sauce. But when Elves takes a turn to Thoughtseize, it's a turn that they're not developing Elves. So I can pitch one of these Omnisciences to Force of Will and I won't miss it. JK. Never countering a spell in my life. Okay, so I get to... Put in Omniscience, and Impulse has to find the win. And if they have uh, the Archon of Valor's Reach in their hand and name Instant, I lose. But I've done what I'm supposed to do here. All right, let's go. All right, found Intuition. That should do it. Intuition. There should be three Cunning Wishes still in the deck. All right, cool. Uh, they missed their chance to surgical my cunning wishes if they did have that, but I don't think they do. Please don't mind break trap me. Oh, I should have played the second omniscience. All right, and we got that one. Yeah, I think I should have played the second omniscience before I played anything else. I think that's just good practice. I don't. I mean, I clearly didn't need it in that spot, and I don't know what they could have 
had after the show and tell resolved that would have changed that. But yeah, I, it, I think it is good practice. To just get the second omniscience down while you can. I, I don't think anything changes here. Same deck. Let's go. Well, my hand contains some powerful magic. I'm going to keep here. There's a lot to like about this one. I think I turn one intuition for omniscience, turn two win. Of course, Thoughtseize is rough here. Uh, yeah, you got me. If they have Thoughtseize Surgical, I'm just on the full Monastery Mentor, hope for the best. One of Mentor, carry the day. But I don't know if they would bring in Surgical for the matchup. Guess they've seen Intuition. That's a big reason to have Surgical in your deck. They took the show until went for the, the obvious choice. It's usually the right one, in my experience. So Ancient Tomb, Petal... I'm just going to run all my petals out in case they do have Mind Break Trap. I want to respect it a little. So I can Intuition for... Huh. What do I do with that? Do I just let it resolve? I think I do. Because if I wish or Intuition for anything, they take that. If they take the Brainstorm, I still have the Intuition. So... And like Brainstorm is the best card to clean up after a Thoughtseize. And my hand's already good if they just take Brainstorm. So yeah, I think that is the play. And I think they're supposed to take Intuition here. That one gives me the most control over stuff. Unless they do have the Surgical Extraction, then they should take Brainstorm. They ended up taking the Intuition. That makes sense to me. Is there something that I cunning wish for now that that has happened? I don't think so, because I still have this Brainstorm to cast. Okay, that's what kind of what we were trying to do here. Go back, Ancient Tomb. Now I wish I didn't run out that Lotus Petal, because I'd love to put one of them back. Uh, put back Ancient Tomb, and I don't think I, I... I think I need the Polluted Delta and Brainstorm. Yeah, because now I'm looking for specific things. If I find Omniscience with, off this Ponder, I just win right now. All right, come on, Omniscience. Let's do the thing. That's not the thing. Omniscience. Uh, I am going to hold on this. That was close. That came together really quickly off that Brainstorm. It's ponder for Omniscience. A lot of fresh looks. Let's hope they don't have a third Thoughtseize. They generally don't play that many. Ugh. I hope this is a desperation and not a Thoughtseize, Thoughtseize into win. If they have Cradle right now, we could lose. Okay, that's great. It was a desperation. Omniscience. All right. Preordain into Omniscience. Cunning Wish, Swords to Plowshares. I definitely don't want Cunning Wish. I think I'm just trying to chase the Omniscience here. Ugh. In... Hindsight's twenty twenty. when, like, you miss and you're like, wow, I wish I just took Plow, but I'm so close to winning the game right now. All right, so they tanked for a while and then played a forest. Attack for two. All right, I mean, they had something to think about. I still don't think there's a Cunning Wish that I want to fire off here. Omniscience. Uh, I mean, I could just put in the Emrakul and hope that they're dead. I think that's actually reasonable. There he is. She is. Sorry, Emrakul. There she is. They had two cards in their hand that didn't kill me last turn. Unfortunately, this Force of Will is not helpful because of the Shep. Luckily, the Dried Arbors are not Elves. So even if they have Cradle and pump the team with Shepherd, they stay 1-1s. One and if Emrakul connects, uh, the game will end because they... Well, they're at 14 for one. But even if they were at 20, Elves realize on a critical mass of permanence in play, which Annihilator 6 does pretty effectively remove. All the dead air is going to be edited out, but they've been tanking in this end step for a very long time. Uh, if, you, if you watch their clock, I suspect they've been here for like two minutes already. Uh, I think they're doing the math of, is Nurturing Peatland better as a random card off the top of the deck, or as a mana source going into their next turn? They're... They're going to win or lose based on that decision, so they're, they're taking their time with it. I really hope they crack it, because 
cracking it is like a desperate, I gotta figure this out line. Leaving it in play is a, okay, I got this, and I'm gonna use this for mana line. So I, I'm rooting for a crack. All right, they cracked it. That's what I wanted, so let's hope I was right. Here we are. One of us is dead. Let's figure it out. I've said this several times already this league, but Allosaurus Shepard is seriously messed up. Like, this card just exists, and it's a one-drop. Nice force of will. I would feel unbeatable if Shepard didn't exist with this setup. But instead, I am scared. Though I do love the Magic the Gathering flavor of this Eldritch God is in play with Counterspell backup and trembling in her squiggly boots from these four 1-1s against the deck full of forests. I, I, I do appreciate trying to picture that in the uh, the flavor sphere like what does that battlefield actually look like All right, here comes the symbiote there's the cradle of course six seven eight so they can six oh they're redrawing cards okay that's really good for me that's one less attacker that they have now and also two less mana they have okay yeah they're definitely spinning the wheels right now i'm not saying that it's a lock either way, uh, but they are definitely spinning the wheels. They did not just have it, which is what I was worried about. Every resource they commit, like the symbiote's been activated, three mana's been, or five mana's been sent, or four? Four mana, five. No, they played symbiote, they bounced visionary, they played once upon a time, they played visionary. So five mana's been spent, symbiote's been activated, Visionary's been reset, so it can't be an attacker, even if they find the, the natural order. So every every pip of mana spent, every like onboard trick activated is good for me, because I'm winning if the status quo is kept. It's up to my opponent to figure out how to push this in the other direction. Windswept Teeth is not what they were looking for off of that once upon a time. They've already made their land drop. I haven't done the, the Greater Hoof math. I might just lose to a Natural Order. So they have... They'll have to tap a Dryad Arbor to cast it, right? I've lost track of their floating mana. I think they had two floating. Zenith for two. This can't be what they want to be doing. No. No way. Land drop's already spent. I don't see how they get out of this. Uh, unless they have Run Afoul in their deck. If they can make me sacrifice a flying creature for one green mana... They win this game easily. But that I think that is the out. Okay. They packed it up. Oh, that was stressful. But it was a good match. We put up the 4-1 with Blue-White Omni. Uh, I forget what we lost to already. It's It's been a while. But uh, all of the matches were, were good. Uh, there were some, I think, discipline decisions of like, no, it's not time to go for it. Let me make sure this resolves. Let me take the extra turn to do this right. Let's play around days everywhere we can. And then there were also some just like YOLO, turn one Emrakul, can you beat it? Good luck, go. Sort of plays. And Monastery Mentor pivoted onto the beatdown. Oh right, we lost to that blue-black control deck. That deck was so cool. We deserve to lose that deck. Or they deserve to win. Somewhat. Someone deserves a win there because their deck was so awesome. But uh, we beat everything else. Uh, a variety of things, I guess, a variety. We, I mean, elves twice, and then uh, we did beat Rug Delver when we played against that. Just jam show and tell through. Emrakul can't be beat. Monastery Mentor in the game two plan. So that did pay off well. I definitely think that this Cunning Wish package is not as robust as it is in Blue Green Omni, but I also don't think it needs to be. Like, there were a couple spots where I just had Cunning Wish in my hand with nothing going on, and there was nothing worth wishing for, which maybe that's a problem, maybe it's not, um, maybe it's fine. Uh, maybe that is, like, some automatically built-in discipline of you can't just fire off Cunning Wish when it's not that good. Like, just save it for when you find the Omniscience, you idiot. Like, maybe that's what they're doing uh, with the deck-building choices here. But this felt good. I liked it. I like any time I can play Monastery Mentor off three basic lands. Just disrespect the Blood Moon deck. That feels good. I'm into it. I Where this ranks in the uh, echelon of show and tell decks I've played, Sneak and Show, I think, will always be my least favorite because I just feel like that deck's fail rate is unreasonable. Uh, 
obviously I know the deck is good. Uh, it's always been good. It always will be good. But personally, I don't like how how prone to failing it is. I think blue green I like better than blue white because Veil of Summer is just such a messed up card and shifting ceratops does a good monastery mentor impression out of the sideboard so you still have the juke and teferi never or teferi came up once uh there was one time where teferi was in play doing work but i think we would have won that game without him but he was there so count it but when you play blue green omni you feel the veil of summer is just picking up so much slack all the time and teferi didn't really feel like he was doing that uh, maybe Mentor did a little bit of that, but I still feel like as far as splash colors go, I would play blue-green Omni if I were going to be a show-and-tell deck. But play styles are a thing, just raw win win percentage isn't always what people are looking for. So if you like Monastery Mentor, and boy do I like Monastery Mentor, uh, give this one a shot. Thanks for watching, Travis. Thanks for submitting the deck. Uh, make sure to comment your thoughts, how you change the list, how you would have played differently. Always happy to hear it. And remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you around.